Hello, I'm Dr. Joseph Ricotta, and this is the Society for Vascular Surgery Briefing about how to successfully submit abstracts for presentation and publication. An abstract is a concise summary of your manuscript or research project. Writing an effective abstract requires excellent organizational skills and compulsive attention to detail. Most abstracts are limited to 250 words or less, therefore it is critical that each word included in the abstract be meaningful. In addition, most abstract reviewers are reading and scoring hundreds of abstracts just like yours, so it's important to keep it simple, direct, and to the point. Remember to follow the four C's of abstract writing. Be complete, concise, clear, and cohesive. And answer the four questions. What did you start? What did you do? What did you find? And what does it mean? Abstracts are usually divided into five parts. Title, objective, methods, results, and conclusions. The title should be as succinct as possible, declarative, and, accurate, and accurately communicate the message of your study. You want to grab the reviewer's attention. It should be easy for the readers everywhere to understand and should not include jargon or unfamiliar acronyms. The number of words in the title are usually not counted toward the abstract word limit. The objective section answers the question, why did you start? It should state the aim of the study and include a concise statement of the study's hypothesis. Space is at a premium, so a short sentence or two must suffice. Avoid background information and unnecessary words or phrases, such as, the aim of our study was. Just simply state the purpose in one sentence if possible. The methods section answers the question, what did you do? Its description must be concise, and many details of what was done must be omitted. However, in the space available, the reader can be given a good idea of the design of the study, the context in which it was done, and the types of patients or measurements that were included. It should be explicitly stated whether the study was retrospective or prospective, and whether there was randomization. The primary endpoints of the study should also be listed in this section. The results section answers the question, what did you find? This is the meat of the abstract. It is important to give the main results in the form of real data, not just in subjective terms, such as we found device X to, to be superior to device Y, the results that pertain to the study's hypothesis and that constitute the primary endpoints described in the methods section must be included here. Data from which the conclusions will be drawn should be reported in as much detail as space allows. Avoid reporting excessive numbers that can clutter this section and make it difficult to read. Remember, simple is better. Round up to whole numbers rather than reporting values with decimal points. Avoid listing values with their standard deviations and use p-values to indicate statistical significance. A table or figure should only be included if it conveys the findings of the study more effectively than the text alone. If a table is to be used, the word limit of the abstract is often reduced accordingly. Often, the intended message of the tables and figures are diminished or lost completely because they are simply too small for the reviewer to interpret. The conclusion answers the question, what does it mean? This is the most important section of the abstract and conveys your take-home message of why the study's findings are important and what you believe they mean. The most common mistake here is to make more of the data than they deserve. Conclusions should be reasonable and supportable by the findings of the study. One or two take-home points should suffice. In general, write clearly and concisely, use simple declarative sentences. Active voice is preferable to passive voice. For example, we studied 100 patients with aortic aneurysms is better than 100 patients with aortic aneurysms were studied. Use generic names for drugs and devices and avoid too many abbreviations. Any abbreviations should be spelled out in the abstract on the first use. Repeated use of the same abbreviation will, however, help limit the number of words used. Prior to abstract submission, reread the instructions to ensure that you have followed them exactly. The abstract should never have a grammatical mistake, misspelled word, or typographical error. It is often helpful to have someone unfamiliar with your study to read the abstract and confirm that what you have written makes sense. Before the final draft is submitted, every listed author must read and approve the abstract. Writing an effective abstract will improve the chances of your manuscript being accepted, encourage people to read it, and increase its impact. I hope this information is helpful to you. This briefing is made possible by a grant from Cook Medical. To learn more about vascular health, visit vascularweb.org.